I hate to say this, but I've got some really bad news. I mean, this makes me sick. It's actually disturbing. What the heck? Walleye season freaking closes this weekend. It's like we finally get safe ice every year. Conditions are great for traveling anywhere you want to go. Walleyes are finally starting to bite. We got warmer temps and the season closes where I'm at in Minnesota. So it's time to gear up for panties, crappies and bluegills. Tis the season. The bite should get better and better. Less people will probably be on the lake. It'll be warmer and fish start showing back up and they're pretty bitey as the water warms. So let's talk spooling up. What is the best line for hard water pan fish? And I wish there was one easy answer of X. Use this all the time, no matter what, it's all you need. But depending what you're doing, where you're fishing, how deep baits you're running, uh, you gotta tweak your line diameter, your type between mono, fluoro, braid, even your line color. So I'm gonna try to keep this brief without blabbing too dang much and just go over kind of my program for spooling up for hard water panfish. So first, if I had to choose one, let's say I'm going to a lake I've never fished before. I don't know if the fish are gonna be in eight to 10 foot weeds, 30, 40 foot basin, and I only have to spool up one rod. I'm gonna put a three pound clear suffix advanced ice mono on there awesome all around line i still feel three pound is just the deal for no matter what you want to do yeah there's times where if you're fishing super clear water shallow finicky bluegills you bump down to two pound test and you're going to catch more fish scary thing with two pound test is you can absolutely break it on a hook set on a big fish four pound test there's times where that's nice if you're using bigger spoons for bigger crappies but at the same time you're going to get shut down by way more fish having thicker diameter line especially the big smart ones. Three pound is kind of that happy medium. It's still thin enough, but still strong enough that you can catch bass and pike on the stuff and it won't break. So of course you're good with bluegills. Now I run clear. The only time that I would use the uh, neon lime color is if you're doing some sort of a variation of tight lining. Tight lining is when guys are fishing right over their hole, looking down and instead of feeling the bite, they're basically watching their line and there's just a little bit of, not coils, but a little bend to the line when you have a fish bite and pick up that bait because your jig is otherwise gonna be pulling it straight. So you're bouncing your jig like this. As soon as you lower your rod tip and that line coils up a little bit, it's because it's taking the weight off of that. That means the fish has it and you set the hook and that's where those bright lines come in. All right, mono, why mono? Mono's old school. That's what grandpa used back in the day, right? when there's fluorocarbons and super lines and everything, copolymers, whatever out there nowadays. But mono's making a comeback for good reason. It works well, it's cheap, it's strong. And nowadays mono, like Suffix Advanced Ice, 50% less stretch than old school mono. So that right there is a huge factor in why people shied away from monos before. It was just too much stretch at times. So now this was 50% less stretch. It's just enough to help keep fish pinned. It's like a shock absorber. If you're fishing for big crappies, you're not gonna tear out as many hooks. And it just keeps that fish pinned, a little bit of a cushion, or on a super light bite where they're not engulfing the bait and they're just nipping at it, you're gonna have lots of fish just skin hooked on the snoot. And that's gonna just let you get more of those fish topside. And the nice thing about the new advanced ice mono is I have some of it spooled up that I've been using the whole season already. Back in the day, mono would get those nasty coils and shoot off your spool. I mean, if it sat there for three, four days, you're almost re-spooling it every trip out like you do with fluorocarbon. Not anymore. So if I had to pick one line, it would be three pound clear Suffix Advance Ice Mono. I really like fishing with Suffix Advance Ice Mono when I'm using baits like ultralight rip and wraps, tingler spoons, flash champ spoons, maybe mustache jigs, or the bigger size, not tungsten tubby, the Mondo, the big one with plastics, bigger, heavier baits that are gonna help pull that line tight and straight because Mono has more floating properties than sinking properties like fluorocarbon. So enter fluorocarbon. Like I said, there are times where every line shines. It's got its pros and cons. So fluorocarbon, it's the least visible, very strong, very smooth, 
and just that whole fish and shallow finicky bluegills mostly for me i'm talking five to ten feet of water big smart ones two pound fluorocarbon sometimes three you are going to get more bites if those are pressured fish the stuff is super smooth and strong but the tough thing with fluoro it just doesn't seem to last as long on a spool and it's expensive you get 50 yard spools instead of 100 but for those big smart ones there's times you need it to fool them so what you can do is throw a little piece of you know electrical tape on there and just spool up 30 40 feet of fresh fluoro on top of that for a trip out and then you're gonna make a 50 yard spool last a long time by having old mono or old floral as filler on that spool, putting electrical tape over it so you don't have a knot catching when you're trying to fish and just putting enough fresh line on for the day. All right, so let's throw a scenario out there. When would I use two or three pound suffix Invisalign fluorocarbon? I mentioned it briefly, sight fishing or shallow water, big picky eaters. I'm primarily going to be using fluoro when I'm using smaller tungsten, like the three millimeter size or a 64th ounce VMC tungsten tubby, tiny little baits for big smart fish, basically. Here's a little Invisalign fluorocarbon factoid you might not know. It actually sinks four times faster than mono. That means four times faster your bait is going to get back down that much quicker. So if you're on a hot school, a hot hole, you're plucking fish out of there and you're trying to keep them fired up you're absolutely going to be able to get down a little bit quicker with fluoro and it might be just enough of an edge to up your catch compared to your buddy now fluorocarbon is going to sink it wants to straighten itself out and pull itself tight so when you're using these minuscule little 64 ounce baits three millimeter tungsten tiny flies it helps keep the connection between what you feel and the bait as taut as possible which means you're going to feel more bites Speaking of feeling more bites, enter braid. So braided lines like the Suffix 832 Advanced Ice Braid are gonna shine in ultra, ultra deep water. Everybody knows braided lines, super lines have no stretch. So you're gonna feel everything. When I would bust out braided line for panfish is gonna be if I'm in, I guess that number would be like 30 feet for me. Once I go from 30 feet, 40 feet, 50 feet, whether it's deep basin crappies, uh, late ice those fish will be out in that mud still because there's more and more bugs and invertebrates it just comes to life as things are melting in the water and the sun's shining so you will find fish deep like that early ice you still have tons of big crappies piled in the deepest holes in the lake where they were in the fall where you left them or if you're fishing jumbo perch basin fish too super deep it's just without braided line you would never ever feel that fish pick up your bait no matter if you have a $500 custom ice rod <laughs> set up. If you're in 55 feet of water and a perch lifts your bait up this far, you're not going to feel it. But with braided line, it's actually doable. Now, of course, the downfall of braid, visibility. So you can combat that with a fluorocarbon leader. But the reason that I guess I don't use braid as much as I used to is I fish outside a whole lot more nowadays as well. Even the best ice fishing braided line is gonna absorb more water than a fluorocarbon or mono. So I will say that Suffix Advanced Ice Braid does do a really good job of shedding water for braid. It's got what they call a hydrophobic water repellent. It, it helps shed water instead of just soaking it in, but it's still gonna absorb more water than a mono or a fluorocarbon would. And so that's why when I'm outside hole hopping, I'm going for that rod with mono on it because it just isn't going to hold moisture. It's not going to freeze. It's super fishable. Even if it's negative 10 degrees outside and you're hole hopping, it's not going to be freezing up. You're not going to have to run your fingernails across it to break off ice chunks. So like I said, there's no one specific line type that's going to be the perfect answer for every pan fish related question. Each one has its own pros and cons depending on how you like to fish, your style, the type of fish you're targeting, whether you're targeting them in deep basins or in the weeds, water clarity, you name it. So I hope some of this information can be put to use somewhere out there to help you catch a few more panfish, this late ice. Bummed out walleye season is coming to a close, but it's a good excuse to get out and try something different. Maybe catch a few more fish than uh, hoping you catch one or two walleyes in a week. Do me a favor, comment below and let me know what you want to see next. What you want us to fish for, how you want us to try to catch them, or if there's something you want to learn about. 
If I don't know, I'll bring somebody else in who knows a lot more than I do. <laughs> so thank you so much for watching. If you haven't yet, hit that subscribe button and stay tuned. We're heading back out soon.